Grace and peace, my fellow believers in Christ. This is your brother, Felix Copeo. I am coming from Kenya. Uh, right now, I'm in Homer Bay County. Uh, we want to get into the text, the pure written word of truth, that is the King James Bible, where we find all what God wants us to know and believe for our edification, learning, and our information, instruction into righteousness. Having said that, my fellow believers in Christ, let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for this morning, for allowing us to discuss and believe and trust the very voice of you, which is active, authoritative, and without error. The King James Bible, 1611 in English language. From it, we find your word, which is infallible, authoritative. Right now, we want to look at our identity in Christ that you are uh, that you given to us and we want to know from Romans through Philemon we thank you for all the spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and also we thank you for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that we received by grace through faith alone the moment that we are uh, we, we trusted and believe in the death burial and resurre resurrection of Jesus Christ for our soul salvation uh, at that particular time we had got eternal life this is my humble prayer and thanksgiving this morning. In Jesus' name I pray, trusting and believing. Amen. Welcome all my fellow believers in Christ for this Bible fellowship prayer. Uh, today we have got this topic to the body of Christ. It is about knowing our identity in Christ. Knowing your identity in Christ. Amen. So we need to understand who we are in Christ so that uh, when we face all this dangerous teaching from denominationalism and the religious movement, we can know how to uh, counter-attack that. Having said this, my fellow believers in Christ, uh, for you to know your identity in Christ, you need to have the King James Bible. It is in the King James Bible that we have, uh, to, we have the knowledge of who we are in Christ. The knowledge of who you are in Christ cannot be found in religious movement. It cannot be found in denominationalism but rather it is found in the perfect pure word of truth which is the king james bible right so in the king james bible you have to learn where to start learning about who you are in christ and uh it is in the king james bible that we found in romans through philemon that you find all the instructions and uh, information to be believed about who you are in Christ. So, you've got your mail, that is Romans through Philemon, in the King James Bible, and also uh, from the only one apostle to the body of Christ is called one apostle, the apostle Paul, the master builder. He was the one who Jesus Christ revealed to, uh, to the entire world about the new information that we have in Christ Jesus. Had it not been the apostle Paul, we could not have known Christ in his, uh, in his heavenly ministry. So Paul is the apostle. Paul is the preacher. And Paul is the teacher. So we need to share the information that Apostle Paul revealed from our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, that is the apostle. Paul is the master builder. Okay. This mail, this information, Romans through Philemon, is not to the nation of Israel, but rather to the body of Christ. And the body of Christ here is them that have believed in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are not talking about denominationalism. We are not talking about any religious movement. We are talking about the body of Christ. It is called the new creature. Amen. So Romans through Philemon is directed to the body of Christ and the new creature. Right? So to be a member of the body of Christ, my fellow believers in Christ, it is very simple. There is no work from you involved or required. To be a member of the body of Christ, it, it is to trust in God, God the Son, Jesus Christ, as your only Savior, right? And then without doing, saying, or praying anything, believe that Christ died for your sins, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scripture, Romans through Romans 1, Romans chapter 1, 1 through 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through 4, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, and Ephesians chapter 2, 
verses 8 and 9. That those verses will address to you, will tell you how to become a member of the body of Christ without doing something, without saying something, or without praying anything, right? We've all just been stumbled around in the darkness. Acts chapter 26 verse 18. Until we trusted in Jesus Christ and believed the same gospel of Christ Paul received and preached as the new salvation pattern for this present dispensation of the grace of God, right? So this, this gospel that Paul is preaching, it began when Saul of Tarsus was saved in Acts chapter 9, and it will continue until, the, until this present dispensation of the grace of God ends, which is at the rapture time, right? You can also read that in Romans chapter 4, verse, five through, uh, verse 4 through 5, and 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 16. We say that Paul was the first member to be uh, part of the body of Christ. Once you believed, once you've believed Paul's gospel of Christ, that is Christ's death, burial, and resurrection of uh, and resurrection for your soul salvation, you are in the body of Christ. Amen. You are a child of God. You've got God's spirit in you. So now you are able to receive the things of the spirit of God. We received the things of the spirit of God because we are in the body of Christ. We are, uh, we are children of God. Amen. And we've got the spirit of God in us. Right. So you are male. You are male. My fellow believers in Christ is Romans through Philemon. So we need to understand that my fellow believers in Christ. Amen. So uh, God has provided wonderful and glorious blessings to the one who has put his faith in Christ. He has given these marvelous blessings to us because he loves us. Paul wrote that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Paul proclaimed many of these blessings in the opening verses of Ephesians chapter 1. One of the most magnific uh, magnificent passage, uh, passages in the scripture. He emphasized that these blessings to the believer in Christ are to the praise of the glory of God's grace. So we need to understand that when you read, uh, when when you read First uh, Timothy, uh, uh, Ephesians chapter one, from verse three to verse uh, to verse seven to verse fourteen, you will find uh, what uh, Paul has actually addressed as the wonderful blessings to them that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. So some of these blessings enumerated above in that text, these blessings are a, pass, a package. When a person believes the gospel, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 1 through 4, as he has a new relationship with God, right? He is no longer an enemy, but a son or a daughter of God. He stands in an ending stream of God's grace from which all blessings flow. These blessings, though real, must be appropriated by faith for the believer to experience them. Faith gives victory in the Christian life, right? The scripture declared that what God says about the presence possession for those who have put their trust in, in his son. Believe them. Victory in the Christian life is through faith. That is Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, chapter 11 declares how believers in the past had victory in their lives. It was all by faith. They believed what God said. Amen. So these blessings my fellow believers in Christ. Are not for those who reject Christ's redemption and love. But they will face only judgment and condemnations awaits them. Jesus came to save mankind. His death and resurrection solved the problem of sin and death. But Jesus was one, uh, Jesus warned that judgment awaited those who refuse his offer of salvation. Amen. So before we get into the message of, of today. Allow, allow me to look at uh, what the denominationalism and religious movements 
and teaching. Remember, the uh, denominationalism and the religious teachings are man-made to deceive the entire world. We should be aware of this element of religious denominationalism, which is built largely upon scripture taken out of context. Remember, we have a denominationalism called Pentecostalism. It began when the uh, when the uh, when what Joel prophesies was coming true in Acts chapter two, right? They twisted that verse. They twisted that chapter to form their denominationalism name called Pentecostalism. These people actually they built their doctrine largely upon scriptures taken out of context and mixed with men's bias, secretarism, philosophy, tradition, and ideas, right? Uh, which then corrupts the uh, Apostle Paul's gospel of the grace of God that says to simply believe or trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen? That is Acts chapter 16, verse 31. Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 to 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 to 15. Believers should be wary of Satan's false minister of righteousness. Men's religion, man's, men's religions pollute your mind, causing you to forget that believers are complete, lacking nothing in Christ. Colossians chapter 2 verse 10. So, man controlled religion is, uses a first step plan below that serves to take a new Christian's mind off of God's all-sufficient provision of Christ cross and life for them. Amen? Man controlled. Religion keeps the believer's mind focused on himself, on his performance, under religious rules and on his futile self-export to try and make himself more acceptable in order to be blessed by God. Those are the mind of the religious movement. Okay. What they do is this. They convert and charge, in quote, people to their denomination. Very rarely is a clear or complete gospel presentation given. Often the people is still lost, still going to eternal damnation, judgment, although appearing to be going to heaven because he or she is now a church individual. Number two, they then use Israel's water baptism program to put you, to put their names on the church membership roll. Sadly, there are, uh, there are ever so many people in the world who base their eternal salvation on a water ceremony. One day they will learn what a failure that kind of salvation is. They give them various uh, rules and regulations to follow for Christ, for God's acceptance. Some from Israel's program and some, from, uh, some are strictly man-made by the, their denomination. This may include an expected number of daily prayers, a very thorough daily confession of sins, a holy book reading, keeping obligatory holidays or feast days, generous thanksgiving, tithing, and other donations. Even the clergy have difficulty remembering and obeying all these man-made ecclesiastical laws, which often are drawn from Israel's program, not applying in today's age of the dispensation of the grace of God. Number four, this religious movement, they punish people who do not perform as the denominational requires. This may include excommunication, shunning, threats about how God will curse them, how they are disobeying God or blaspheming his name or spirit, etc. So by contrast, my fellow believers in Christ, what a strong and rich system grace is. We are accepted before God by simple faith in Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Acts chapter 16 verse 31. May we not let religion rob us of such clarity and simplicity it is God who died for us 
and saved us by grace through faith alone in Christ alone as the gift of God. Ephesians chapter 3, chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. The fact is that after our salvation by grace through faith in Christ alone, he does the work of transforming us from inside out. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, and Philippians chapter 2, chapter 1, verse 6. Amen? Right. So, knowing your identity in Christ. Amen? For you to know your identity in Christ. My fellow believers in Christ. Get the King James Bible. Read your mail. Your mail is from Romans through Philemon. There you are going to know about your identity in Christ. Amen? Upon believing that Christ was crucified for my sins. Was buried and that he rose again on the third day for my justification. I know that, that this is my identity. So let us check our identity in Christ after we believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now this is who you are. In other words, right? We are redeemed. Galatians chapter 4, verse 5. The, uh, our identity number 1 is found in Galatians chapter 4, verse 5. Galatians chapter 4 verse 5, allow me from the very voice of God that is active without error, authoritative, and infallible. That is the King James Bible. I'm just giving you the mind of God about our identity in Christ. Galatians chapter 4 verse 5. Amen. Galatians chapter 4 verse 5. Right. We get it here. Identity number one. Galatians chapter 4 verse 5. To redeem them that were under the law. Remember time. There was a time that we were under the law. That we might receive the adoption of sons. Those people who are still under the law. Have not received the adoptions of sons. They have not belonged. Into the family of God. There was a time that we were under the law. But Christ came. And died to redeem us that were under the law. Amen. That we might receive the adoptions of son. What do we receive from our Lord Jesus Christ? We received uh, adoptions of sons. That means we were taken out of Adam. We were taken out of the law and put under grace. And we were taken out of Adam where there was wrath and penalty of sin. And now we are placed into Christ. Once you are in Jesus Christ, you are a member of the body of Christ. You are a child of God and you've been redeemed. Amen. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying about father. Right. Because we are children of God. How did we receive the adoption? We received that adoption by God himself when we believe and trusted in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So because we are God's children, we have the spirit of God, right? The spirit of his son. That is the spirit of Jesus Christ, right? We have it in, 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 in our hearts, right? So in denominationalism and Pentecostalism, those people every Sunday, every in their fellowship, they cry and, and pray to God to send the Holy Spirit upon themselves. But that is not how God sent the Holy Spirit. Those who belong to Christ, they have received the Spirit of God. They have been adopted into God's family. Already you have the Spirit of God into your heart crying about Father. If you attend any denominationalism church or Pentecostalism, you are going to be, uh, to be robbed of that identity. Identity number one is that we have been redeemed. Number two, we've been made to be, uh, to be sons of God. Let me use the scripture word. We've been adopted as sons, as the sons of God, right? Since we've been into that family of God, we don't lack the spirit. We have the spirit of God in our heart, right? 
So this spirit of God in our hearts is the, is the sign that we belong to God. We are God's possession, right? We don't belong to ourselves. We don't belong to Adam, but we belong to God. We belong to Christ. That's why when Christ will come, he will take which is, which is his, that is the church, the body of Christ. Amen? So, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart crying, Abba, Father. I might not be able to have money. I might not be able to have wealth. I might not be able to have all these beautiful things people need in this world. But I am, I have, I have the most important thing, the personality of Christ. That is the Holy Spirit of God. I have eternal life. I have been forgiven past, present, and future. Forevermore, we, we are children of God. Amen? Praise the Lord. Number two, I am complete in Christ, right? Colossians chapter two, verse, uh, Colossians chapter two, verse 10. Identity number two. Colossians chapter 2 verse 10. Amen. Colossians chapter 2 verse 10. Allow me to read from the King James Bible. Right. And ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power. Christ is the head of all principality and power. Right. The position we've been placed as the body of Christ is above Right? Is above all the operation of devils and Satan. We've been placed in the heavenly places high above. Right? So we are not, uh, our operation is not in this uh, physical world. Right? So we need to understand our positions as children of God. Placed above the principality, above the power. And we are complete in him. What that simply means is that we lack nothing in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. In the realm of the spiritual sphere, spiritual influence, there is nothing like emotionalism, there is nothing like sight, there is nothing like taste and emotional experience. We are working under the spiritual realm. We've been circumcised, identified with our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, in that circumcision is made without hands. No law of Moses involved. No tradition is involved. No observing of feast days or holidays involved. Amen. No keeping of commandment involved here. Our circumcision. We were circumcised by grace through faith alone in Christ alone. And we belong to Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Number three. I am a new creature. Right. Second Corinthians chapter 2, chapter 5, verse 17. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Allow me to read from my favorite, only blessed book, blessed book, holy, which is active and authoritative and without error, the King James Bible. Amen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Your identity in Christ as a new creation is going to be, uh, you, are go you are going to be robbed this when you attend any denominational church. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, number five, I am called to be a saint. Romans Chapter 1, verse 7. You are a saint. What that means is that you are separated. You are holy. Do you know why you are holy? Because you've been saved by grace through faith alone. Because you have got eternal life. Because you have got the spirit of God. God is using you because you are now holy. Amen? God will not use, God will never use unbelievers. He is using the believers, right? Uh... Romans chapter 1 verse 7. <clears throat> okay, Romans chapter 1 verse 7. Another identity that we have in Christ. Okay, Romans chapter 1 verse 7. We have it here, my fellow believers in Christ. Right? <clears throat> what we simply know is that uh, uh, we, we are called to be saint. Right? Okay, Romans chapter 1 verse 7. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God. 
called to be saints. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? We are, we, uh, we are, uh, we are called beloved. We are called saint. We are called beloved of God no matter what is taking place. We are loved because we are in Christ Jesus. As a result of that, because we are loved and we are called saint, grace to you and peace from our Lord Jesus, from, uh, from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. We call God our Father. Because in, from our Father, we don't receive condemnation. From our Father, we don't receive punishment. From our Father, we don't receive the wrath. Rather, from our Father, we receive grace and peace. We received grace and peace, right? That is how God is dealing with us today in a relationship with, with grace and peace. Because we are saved. We have the peace of God. We have the peace with God. Amen? My fellow believers in Christ, that is a blessing that we have in Christ Jesus, right? Okay, I am accepted in the beloved. <clears throat> that is <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 1, sorry, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 6. We are accepted in the beloved. Religious people, they still looking to be accepted. But what about us? We've been accepted already. In what? In Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Allow me to read. Right? Ephesians chapter 1 verse 6. Uh, right. It is to the praise of the glory of his, of his grace. Wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Right? Don't seek any further acceptation. We received acceptation when we believe in Christ Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. No prayer was involved. No confession of sins were involved. No reading of the Holy Book was involved. But rather, in the uh, the, by faith, through faith, through, by grace, through faith alone, in the cross finished work of Jesus Christ, we were made accepted in the beloved. Amen? Right. I am more than a conqueror. Romans chapter, chapter, chapter 8, verse 30, uh, 37. Allow me to read Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Okay? Romans chapter 8 verse 37. Nay, all these things are, we are made more than conquerors through him that loved us. Amen. Praise the Lord. I am an ambassador for Christ. I am an ambassador for Christ. All believers should be an ambassador for Christ because they were saved by grace through faith alone. And they receive the ministry of reconciliation. And for now, we are ambassadors for Christ. That is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. I am justified freely by his grace. Romans chapter 3, verse 24. So, because we are saved, because we are made accepted in the beloved, because we have eternal life and we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, what are we looking for? I'm not looking for this world to become a better place to be lived by. I'm not looking for my life to have a prosperous life in this uh, temporal life. What am I looking for as a believer in Christ? My friend, my sister in Christ, I am looking for that blessed hope. Amen? Titus chapter 2 verse 13 titus chapter 2 verse 13 what christians should be looking for what i am looking for amen titus chapter titus chapter 2 verse 15 titus chapter 2 verse 15 okay we have it here my fellow believers in christ what we are supposed to be looking for we are looking for that blessed hope. Allow me to read Titus chapter 2 verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and that 
and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Father and our Savior, Lord Jesus, uh, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The believers in Christ are looking for that greatest uh, blessed hope. What about unbelievers? They are looking for indignation. They are looking for damnation. They are looking for the wrath of God. They are looking for the, the judgment before the great white judgment throne. What about us? We are looking for that blessed hope. We are not looking for the uh, tribulation. We are not looking for the wrath of God, right? That is not what we are waiting for. Rather, what we are waiting for is this. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. That is what we are looking for. So what happened with the Lord Jesus Christ, whom we are looking for as a body of Christ, who gave himself for us, brothers and sisters, there was a person who died for us. That person was a hundred percent God, a hundred percent man is called Jesus Christ, God incarnate, right? He did what? He gave himself for us. Christ did not give us money like Pentecostalism and social gospel and prosperity gospel try to insinuate. We were not promised wealth. We were not promised riches of this world. We were not promised health and, and bodily deliverance. We were not promised all these things preachers are preaching, right? But rather, we are promised the blessed hope, right? The one Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Amen. Right. Thank you, my fellow believers in Christ. I am the temple of the living God. We are the temple of the living God. That is 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. Many people think that God still lives in those uh, uh, buildings that people are fellowshipping in. God dwells in a person who has got the Holy Spirit, who has believed in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for his soul salvation. Right? So the God of the Bible dwells in us. Amen? Right? We don't look for God elsewhere. We don't pray like paganism, like religious people are doing it outside there. We pray with the knowledge that we are people of God. We have God in our lives. Praise the Lord. So we don't call him. We have him already. We don't call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, my fellow believers in Christ. So, uh, I have redemption through his blood. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. I am free from the law of sin and death. We are free from the law of sin and death. That's why we, 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 are, uh, we, we have hope. Whoever is having eternal life is free from the law of sin and death. Romans chapter 8 verse 2. I am a son and ever heir of God through Christ. Galatians chapter 4 verse 7. Those are my, our identities. We know the body is not one member, but many. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14. We are not of our own. For we were brought with a price. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, chapter 6 verse 19 and 20. Amen. <clears throat> I am manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. Allow me to read that. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. Amen. For <clears throat> as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in, uh, but in fleshly, uh, but uh, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly uh, tables of the heart. Amen? 
right so i am not far but now made nigh by the blood of christ uh ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 we are sealed by the holy spirit unto the day of redemption that is the rapture that is the time that the holy spirit in us will now leave us because he has secured us safely since we are saved until the day of redemption and that speak of eternal security of our salvation once you are saved you are always saved and you cannot lose salvation in the mind of god there is no this phrase from entire christian and religious movement like backsliding we don't lose our fellowship once we have we are in christ we are in a continuous permanent fellowshipping with god we cannot lose our salvation we cannot lose eternal life that we have we cannot lose the forgiveness of sins that we were given by grace through faith alone we cannot lose our salvation right remember we are sealed by the holy spirit until the day of redemption our salvation is not maintained by our faithfulness continuous faithfulness in christ amen our salvation is not maintained by our good works all right i know people some people are good they are good in uh doing donation some people are good in tithings some people are good in doing water baptism religious rituals and ordinances ceremonies and rules but remember all those things are not the one maintaining our salvation in christ our salvation in christ is maintained by grace through faith alone and by the shed blood of jesus christ which is precious to god amen so we are saved until we are sealed until the day of redemption Amen. I can do all things through Christ which has strengthened me. Because we have Christ, we have the spirit of Christ in us. We find our comfort. And how is the Holy Spirit in Christ comforting us? By using. The Holy Spirit of God is using the King James Bible to comfort us. He is not using motivational speeches from the charismatic people is not using any counselor of the world but he is using the scripture to comfort us and those scriptures which, which comforts us are found in romans through philemon god is not using riches of this world to comfort us god is not using amen god is not using material of this world to comfort us he is rather using the inspired authoritative without error the infallible written pure word of truth which is preserved in the king james bible amen god is not comforting us by healing us as if that is what he's doing no he is using the scripture to comfort us Praise the Lord. So when you read Romans through Philemon, as a believer in Christ, you will be strengthened, you will be comforted, knowing that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which awaits us at the, at the rapture time. That is our comfort. Our comfort is not having money. I am telling this to all African preachers, even all the united states preachers don't send me a, a, don't send me a word of consolation using the material of this word please send me the scripture and uh, tell me who i am in christ and tell me my position and tell me my state and standing and tell me where i'm heading to amen praise the lord so I am risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. Colossians chapter 2 verse 12. Remember what we are to endure. 
I am to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. May I say this? Be since even if you are a member of the body of Christ, even if you are a child of God, God loves us so much. Even if you are redeemed, your, uh, your soul and spirit are in operation of God right now, they are active. Even if <clears throat> you have got eternal life, that does not insinuate you from facing challenges in this life, facing poverty, facing diseases, facing health crisis, facing relationships which are unstable, right? That does not insinuate us from being killed, dying, and living horrible life in this world. Man, we are facing a lot of challenges in life. So let not Pentecostal preacher tell you that because you are now facing challenges, you are under poverty, you are under curse. They are lying to you. Allow me to read 2 Corinthians, 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 1, verse 3. 2 Timoth Timothy, chapter 2, verse 3. <clears throat> 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 3. Amen. Right. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. If you want to experience hardness in your life, since you've been promised, start preaching King James Bible. Rightly divided based on mid acts perspective. My friend, you are going to be ridiculous. You are going to be abandoned. You are going to be isolated. You are going to face social, political, economical crisis in your life. But we are told, and you are. The message of grace is hated by many people in Africa. The message of grace is hated by Satan himself. Satan do not want people to know that by grace through faith alone you are saved. Religious movement do not want to know that we are not under tithing system. Amen. In Africa, if you say that people should not give tithe, you are being condemned, you are persecuted, you are being abandoned, and everyone will isolate himself from you. Amen. And you've been going through a lot of uh, persecution. Those are the hardship. Once you embrace grace, my fellow believers in Christ, before I embrace grace, I was well with the people. People were pleased with by me. But remember, the moment I embrace King James Bible rightly divided based on mid acts, that is now the total war. People don't want to associate with you because you are preaching something. That God revealed to Apostle Paul, which is sound, which is good to the body of Christ, but it is bad to all religious movement. Amen? So we are to endure hardship. I am to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. That is now our identification number 18, right? We are to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 9. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 9. Let us see what we are to make men. Amen. Ephesians. Okay. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 9. Just before. Just after Galatians. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 9. Okay. Right. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Right? So we are to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Right? I am presently holy, unblameable, and I'm unreprovable in his sight. That is Colossians chapter 1 verse 22. I have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sin. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. 
We can all mention all these things. Like I tell you, to know your identity in Christ, read Romans through Philemon. You will know who you are. We are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. I am always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 10. Amen. <clears throat> we are washed, sanctified, and justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 11. We are to wait for Jesus Christ, which delivers from the Lord to come. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 10. We are confident that he which hath begun a good work in, 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 in us will perform it. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. <clears throat> I am saved by grace through faith alone and not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. Lastly, my fellow believers in Christ, we are crucified with him, with Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. I know this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. I faint not, though my outer man, man perish, my inner man is renewed day by day. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. We are a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Corinthians, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Amen. My fellow believers in Christ. Maybe you're watching me and you're confused about yourself, right? Go in your King James Bible. Read Romans through Philemon. You are going to know who you are in Christ. Amen? Because you are in Christ and that gives us hope. That is a fixed position which cannot be broken. There is no any single day that you will find a member of the body of Christ losing his salvation. No. Even right now as we speak, nobody of the mo uh, no member of the body of Christ is suffering in hell. No. Those people who are in hell are them that have rejected the offer of salvation by grace through faith alone. They have rejected that salvation, Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. So they are now in hell. Amen? But those who have received the salvation as a gift, the departed saints, their soul and spirit are in heaven right now as we speak. Before the presence of the almighty God. Waiting the day of their body redemption. Remember, we are redeemed souls and spirit. That has already happened. So what we are waiting for is the day of our, this body redemption. Remember the Holy Spirit through Paul said... The, uh, the blood and flesh cannot inherit God's heavenly kingdom. This needs to be changed. And it will be changed at the rapture time. That is our blessed hope. That Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. When he comes. <clears throat> he's coming to transform. Change our vile bodies. Fashioned unto like his. The glorified one. We are waiting for our, for our glorification. We are waiting for the day of pain, death, amen, and all these challenges we are facing in life will cease. Right now, if God is still operating this program that we are in, the dispensation of the grace of God, we don't expect peace in this world. 
We don't expect comfort. In fact, all this comfort will, will come upon us until the day that we are taken out of this sinful cast world. Amen? Maybe you're watching me and you will not believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Please do so. Because every day people died. Every day Satan is sending, is claiming lives and sending and making people to go to hell because of his spiritual deception. You don't have to go to die and go to hell. You can change that if you are an unbeliever. Please believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and you will have forgiveness of sin, eternal life, redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. You will become a child of God. You will, see, you will be sealed by the Holy Spirit until unto the day of redemption. And you will become my brother or my sister in Christ. Until then, you are not my brother if you are not saved. Until then, you are not my sister in Christ. You are not my sister in Christ because you are not saved. Only them that are saved are our sisters in Christ. Because we are in Christ. Amen. Love you all my fellow believers in Christ. Thank you for watching. Keep on supporting us. We distribute King James Bible copies to people who do not have because we know the King James Bible is the only inspired, authoritative, preserved word of truth that we find the God, uh, we find the, the, uh, the words of God from us, uh, from God to us today. Amen. Shall we pray? Our Almighty Father, we thank you for this blessed time that you've made us to sit together as believers in Christ. Those who are saved by grace through faith alone. Those who have received eternal life. We are really grateful for this moment. We thank you for everything that you've done in our life. This is my humble prayer this morning. In Jesus' name I pray, trusting and believing. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you, my fellow believers, for watching. Love you. Until next time, now grace and peace.